Alana Molstein, registered dietitian nutritionist, and welcome to Living Healthy, Living Well. On today's episode, we're going to discuss the dangers of stress and the role stress plays on our food cravings and behaviors. We'll be having on Mati Shanker, family therapist, to explain to us how to best manage our stress and give us tools for preventing and treating stress. Stress is something we definitely need to speak about today because 43% of all adults suffer adverse health effects from stress. And it has been approximated that 75 to 90% of all doctor visits are for stress-related ailments and complaints. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, declared stress a hazard of the workplace. And the lifetime prevalence of an emotional disorder is more than 50%, often due to untreated stress. Stress can affect our body in so many ways. It can cause muscle tension and pain, fatigue, changes in sex drive. It can make people lose sleep, become anxious or irritable. It can even affect someone's thinning of their hair. It can definitely cause behavioral impacts such as over or under eating, social withdrawal, and tobacco and drug abuse. So we definitely need to work on this stress management so we can avoid all of these horrific impacts. So stress is a very dangerous thing, and one of the main reasons why stress is so dangerous is because our body always will respond to stress the same way you would respond that if we were actually in a very stressful and also potentially harmful situation. So if you're feeling stressed at home or at work, your body is still going to respond the same way as if you were heaven forbid, in a really dangerous situation on the street. And therefore, several things in your body are going to compensate for a fight or flight response. One of the first things that's going to happen is your adrenal glands are going to secrete cortisol. Cortisol is our stress hormone. The first thing cortisol will do is increase your heart rate. It's also going to increase your blood pressure in your body, and it's also going to signal to your liver to release a storage of blood sugar from the liver right into the bloodstream. This is so if in the event that you need to run, you have now blood pressure to supply more oxygen to your body, your heart rate is there to go with the pace of your running, and now you have blood sugar to support your fuel for your run. So if you're just sitting at a boardroom meeting and you have this high influx of blood sugar now in your bloodstream, you're going to need insulin, which is a fat storing hormone, is going to need to come and bring it down. The blood pressure and heart rate increases also are going to spike inflammation in the body, and that could be the one thing to really cause and offset a stroke or heart attack. These are really dangerous things. Another thing stress does is it inhibits the proper digestion and absorption of certain nutrients, and it can also cause constipation or diarrhea, can cause hypothyroidism, which is a lower metabolic rate. So it really has a deep impact on our health and also on our weight. Another impact of stress on obesity is that a high influx of cortisol, the stress hormone, has been highly linked to central fat disposition in the body. So what we found is that cortisol, the stress hormone, likely leads to the accumulation of fat in the visceral areas of our body. So subcutaneous fat is that grabbable fat. Unfortunately, visceral, the fat that we're talking about, this visceral fat, lies further, so we can't grab it. It's actually inside the body and it pads the spaces of our abdominal cavity which is very dangerous because now this fat is surrounding our organs. And this visceral fat accumulation has been shown to lead to metabolic syndrome, heart disease, lead to type 2 diabetes, and has been heavily linked to breast cancer risk in women. Another issue, how stress plays an impact on our weight gain and our food choices, is our appetite. Cortisol has been thought to link to receptors in the brain, namely the hypothalamus that controls hunger. And it has been shown to lead us as stressful individuals to go for more high sugar, high fat foods. And recent studies have shown that when they take cortisol in human and animal studies and inject it into humans or animals, 
people tend to go directly towards high fat, high sugar foods right away. So we really need to be careful about this because we're seeing that these that stress can really make an impact on where our fat goes, especially in the dangerous central cavity. It leads to increases in blood pressure, blood sugar, increased heart rate, increased inflammation, and it leads us to go for less healthy foods more often. So we really need to do our best to relieve our stress and do some clinically proven tools that do release stress, some being listening to music, taking walks, exercise is definitely the golden standard, and some other things such as journaling and you know just smiling, hugging, owning a dog, all these things have been shown to relieve stress. Even smelling lavender or another aromatherapy oil has been shown to reduce stress. And deep breathing always works. So it's very important that we go and we utilize these tools that lower stress in order to prevent these really harmful outcomes. And luckily today we have on Mati Shanker, a therapist, to help us discover other tools in which we can use in the home and workplace. <music>
I'm doing what I, what I, what I, have, what I have to so do. To keep reaffirming yourself and your own abilities and almost like separate Exactly. The exactly. You know, just because he's angry doesn't mean I did anything wrong. Right. You know, and it's very important, you have to remember, was in the workplace, to have that very clear distinction between being assertive and being aggressive. Right. Okay, everybody's entitled to their rights in mm -hmm. the workplace. So the, a certain amount of assertiveness is always very useful and, very, and, and what a person needs. If there's other people to speak to in the office who can maybe help your situation, or there's a way that you can speak back to your boss in a polite, assertive, but not aggressive way, which can also really help your situation. Absolutely, and, almost, and just deal with the issue rather than you know, passively aggressive, deal with the issue. Exactly. exactly. And also eat your way through the issue. That would definitely be helpful. <laughs> and I also noticed in working with people that typically stress comes on in an all or nothing pattern. Either yeah. like everything's going great or 20 stressful things come in at once. I had a client tell me this week, her husband died one year, her mom died the next, and her dad died the next. Oh, wow. So it really just all comes down. So what's the best way to handle these scenarios? Yeah, it's true. It's, you know, it's health, family, money. It always, happens, always seems to happen at the same time. It always happens at the same time. First thing I always tell people is go make the, the separation between the things you can control right. and the things that you can't control. Because there's no point worrying and getting stressed about the things that are out of your control. Absolutely. And then even the things you can control, yes, there could be five, 10, 15 things going on at the same time. And when, it's when you think about them all at the same time, that's when you become overwhelmed. Right. That's when you became stressed, anxious, and you can't sleep. When the issue starts to take over you. Exactly. It's, it's, just, it's just too much to deal with. You hear people say that, I've got too much on my plate. Mm -hmm. I can't deal with it all. So you take one thing, things one at a time. Let's deal with today. Let's deal with today's issues. What do I need to get done with today? What do I need to think about, plan, organize, solve? Let's do today first, right. and then I can live to, and then I can worry about tomorrow. It's like you know, living in the present. What are today's of set of pro problems? What are today's set of solutions? But when you try and do all of life in one go, you can never, never do it all. And that's, I think, the best point is you really need to think rationally within sometimes irrational situations. Uh, that's a good way of putting it. So yeah. when things are really stressful because you have a deadline, so then you grab three donuts, <laughs> well now you have an irrational thinking, and it just leads that slump to just get even further. Exactly. Any time you can be in control of your, more in control of your stress and emotions, you'll cut down on that need to go rushing for those unhealthy foods. Absolutely. It's a really great piece of advice. One step at a time, for sure. And I was wondering, I know that you're also work in the Jewish environment, like serving as a spiritual leader in the community. I was wondering, you know, I find that a lot of stress comes from fear. Mm -hmm. Fear of losing your job, fear of mm -hmm. losing your health, fear of losing money, making mistakes, fear of commitment. How does a person instill some faith as a means of lowering stress? Mm, that's, that's an important point. A lot of people find that faith really helps them with dealing with life stressful situations. You know, faith is, the feeling, the idea that I can, it can't be so bad, I can't go so far wrong, because I have this trust and this confidence in if it's a God or a higher power, that they're really ultimately taking care of me and helping me th through, through, my li through my life and getting things done. Even if the situation seems pretty dark and grim right now, faith helps you to see ahead that there's gonna be a, a better time ahead and you know, a brighter future if you, if you mm -hmm. like. So to instill that faith People should look into their, many religions, faith around. People look into the, their own thing, find different groups in their church or synagogue, and spend some time reading. Take out a, go to the bookstore, go to the library, take out a book about faith, about your religion, and see what it has to offer you. Absolutely. I really, I try to emphasize that with people. It's hard, I'm definitely not a spiritual leader myself, but just kind of breathing in faith and breathing out fear, I find really helps to just yeah. relieve stress. Having a faith in God or a higher power is like the ultimate support system. Right. And that's also what a lot of times when people are feeling stressed is they're lacking a support system. They feel that it's all upon them and they have to do everything themselves. So having faith and having a, a feeling that you have a relationship with whatever your religion is and whatever your faith is gives you that support that someone's helping me through this process. Absolutely. Whatever helps to relieve stress. Mm -hmm. Have you ever personally worked with someone and found that once a person takes control over a stressful situation, other stresses in their life and their health, everything starts to stabilize as well? Hmm. That definitely can happen. I was thinking of, um, as you're asking, I think of one woman in particular who, as an adult, still sort of had a terrible relationship with her mother. And she came to me leading up to a family reunion, which family reunions can be tricky at the, at the best of times. For but sure. when already the relationship is, is extremely strained, 
then it, it was causing her a lot of problems and that stress was definitely not spilling over into the relationship with her husband and her children and affecting, and affecting her work. So we worked on, together on what, should be, what is her relationship with her mother and how should she handle that relationship. And we made some, we did, made some great progress, some really good work. And when she got on top of that, really a lot of the other problems kind of just almost, almost vanished by themselves. Right. It's nice. So nothing's really spilling over. And I know you also specialize in couples therapy. And you and your wife actually both do this together. His wife is also a wonderful, wonderful person. And how does a happy marriage play a role in a person's ability to manage stress? Hmm. Yeah, marriage is a really important thing when it comes to stress. You know, they say an English man's home is his castle. The truth is a person's home should be their sanctuary. Right. You want your home to be the place where you can come home and feel safe mm -hmm. and feel secure. And a stable marriage, or a stable any, or it doesn't have to be a marriage, a stable relationship. And home will, environment. A home environment will give you that security that when you come home, oh, I can breathe. I don't have to worry what's going to happen next, what the next explosion is going to be. I don't have to walk in the door and think, oh, my, my, my partner is going to start nagging me or bugging me. So the fact that I can come home, we said, what do you do about getting home? Like, you want to get home, and then when you're there, OK, wow, now I'm in a safe place. I can stop, I can breathe, I can feel safe, and now I can start tackling some of those issues or giving that time to myself to help me with that stress or anxiety or problems I'm having. You know, now I'm home, I can make sure I'm eating properly, make sure I have time for exercise, meditate if that's what helps you to, re to relax. But having that stable relationship, that stable home environment is almost critical, almost indispensable when it comes to dealing with stress. If you're stressed all day long and then you come home and the stress keeps, keeps going, you're never going to get out of it. And being part of being a, a partner, being part of being in a relationship is that you're offering your help to support someone. Oh, absolutely. And that's a big responsibility when you get into a relationship. It's not all about me anymore. And people say to me, how do you know when you, I'm ready to get married? They mm -hmm. say, when you're ready to stop being selfish. Right. When you're ready to be in a situation where you want to give to someone. And a part of giving to them is you're there to support them and to help them through their, help them through their problems by offering a, ho a safe, stable, and secure relationship. Absolutely. And I definitely recommend, you know, Mati and his wife, Sharon, if there are any issues in your home, in the Los Angeles area because they really are terrific at working that out and give amazing talks and everything else. One thing your wife taught me that I heard her speak once was she said, responsible, it means to be able to control your responses. That's right. And I think that's a great way to also think about stress and take it on is mm -hmm. how are you going to be responsible in this stressful situation. That's right. So thank you so much for coming thank on Thank you for today. having me. It's been how, a pleasure. How can people find you? Uh, best way to contact me is through my email address, mottymft at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on today. All right. Thank you a lot. So one thing I've noticed in working with my clients is that their lives tend to be a little bit of a roller coaster. And when things are good, they're really good. But when things are bad, everything else tends to go bad too. And their lives are very much like this. Because one thing that happens with people is when they see something is going bad in the workplace, they tend to just give up on everything else and say, oh wow, now I'm just going to skip the gym and now I'm just going to have a bunch of cookies because it doesn't even matter. But then you realize that not only are you now stressed about what's happening at work, but now you're feeling guilty and feeling senses of remorse and stress that you ate too much, skipped your workout routine, and everything else failed. And what I really find when I work with people and we get their eating and workout routine and everything else in control, then the rest of their lives tend to be more in control too. So one thing I really recommend is you take Mati Shanker's advice, who we had on today as a guest, and really take control of the things you still have control of, whether it be the temperature in your car, the radio station, your workout routine, the food choices you make on a daily basis. Make sure that these things still stay in control and everything else in your life will tend to be more in control too. So please have a great and restful and relaxing week and email us or write it to us on Facebook or Twitter at Alana Molstein and let us know how things are going. For more on living healthy, living well, be sure to subscribe to EmpowerMe.tv. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.